guys, it's Elise from My Cupcake Addiction and in today's episode I'm going to be showing you how to recreate these gorgeous little Illusion Paint Palette Cupcakes. So I'm going to show you how to make the little paint palette, I'm going to show you how to make the little brushes and I'm also going to show you how to stand them up, making it look like they're actually standing up, just dipping into those little paint palettes. I hope you love this idea, let's get started. The things you'll need to make your Illusion Cake Pops, you're going to need some sticky tape, a little bit of tab water. I'm using some chocolate ganache, so I can link to our chocolate ganache recipe in the description box below, or you can just use your favourite frosting. I've got a knife, a fondant rolling pin, I've got a really sharp knife, and then a paintbrush. A couple of pocky, so if you haven't used pocky before, they're essentially like a breadstick, they kind of look like a pretzel stick, and they're dipped in chocolate. You can also use a pretzel stick dipped in chocolate. I've got fondant or modelling chocolate in a bunch of colours, so I've got a little bit more of the white, and then I've got a small amount of all the colours in the rainbow that I want for my paint palette, as well as a tiny bit of grey. Some corn flour in a shaker, a little bit of silver luster dust, or a little bit of silver shimmer powder. I've got two circle cutters, so I'm using a two and a half centimetre or a one inch, and a six and a half centimetre or a two and a half inch, and then I've also got two small piping tips and I'm really just using these as tiny little circle cutters today. I've also made for you guys a paint splatter printable cupcake wrapper which is absolutely free. I've just printed mine out on a standard home printer on a slightly thicker 210 GSM cardstock and I'm going to be using those to wrap our cupcakes today. So you want to sprinkle down some of that corn flour and roll out your fondant to about two millimeters thick and then you want to cut one of your larger circles. I'm going to make two today. With your smaller circle cutter, you want to cut like a deep crescent moon shape out of the side of both of your circles. And then you want to use your hands just to kind of elongate your circles to make them a little bit more overly. So just stretch out the end a little bit and then neaten them off so they've still got that nice sort of round shape. But they're just a little bit longer like an actual paint palette. Roll out the first of your coloured fondants as thin as you can get it. And then you want to take the larger of your small circle piping tips and you just want to cut out a circle shape. Whenever you use a piping tip to cut, it's generally a little rough, so I just use my fingers to neaten up the edges. Repeat this with all of your different coloured fondant, and because I'm doing two palettes, I've done two dots of each colour. Taking your smaller piping tip now, you just want to cut like the little thumb circle that's normally in a painter's palette out of the side next to that crescent moon. And then using a little bit of water on the back of your paintbrush, you just want to put a tiny bit on the back of each of those little coloured pieces and affix them all the way around. It sometimes pays to space these out before you stick them down just to make sure that you're getting them evenly spaced all the way around your palette. I'm going to do that with both of my palettes today. And then taking my smallest piping tip again, I'm going to choose, this one's going to be a red paintbrush. So through the red palette, I'm cutting a hole. That hole is actually big enough for my entire Pocky stick to slide through and this is going to be the colour that I choose to make the end of my paintbrush for that illusion effect. So for the end of my paintbrush I'm taking a pea sized piece of fondant, I'm rolling it into a ball and then rolling it out into a teardrop. Using a sharp knife I'm just going to make like some kind of little hair lines in it so that it looks like the hairy end of a paintbrush all the way around. Take your Pocky and you want to drive it through the fat end of that little paintbrush tip and you want to bring that up just so that it's about an inch and a half or so so you've got that nice little length of your paintbrush handle. Don't break this off yet. You can use your knife to trim away the bottom edges because you'll have a little bit of just a little bit of mess around the bottom side where you've pushed through that fondant and then just use your fingers to neaten up your shape again. A little tiny bit of water just under the fondant on that chocolate is going to help your little paintbrush tip to stick to your new paintbrush stem. Something like that. Kind of looks like a little shoe on a stick. Roll out some of your grey fondant into a really, really thin, fine sausage here. So just a nice thin length. And then you want to just wrap it around. You should already have some of that existing water above the little paintbrush tip. So you're just going to wrap that grey around, kind of like in two little coils, so that it looks like the little metal joiner that joins your paintbrush stick onto your paintbrush tip. Tear it off at the back so it's nice and neat. Use your fingers just to press it down so it becomes one with your little paintbrush tip. And then you want to take your paintbrush and a little bit more of that plain water. Just dab on just a tiny bit of water, not too much here. That's just to wet the grey down. And then I'm going to use some of that luster dust or shimmer powder and just paint it directly on. So I'm using dry luster dust on a wet surface and we're just going to paint that on. Normally I would use alcohol here because it does dilute, but it's such a tiny amount. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't dry super fast. It's not something that's going to be getting in the way of your work. Something like this. So you have the option of either making the laying down paintbrush or the standing up illusion paintbrush. I'm going to show you how to do the laying down version. Once again, you're taking just a pea sized piece of fondant and rolling it into a cone shape and then use the sharp side of your knife to make some nice little fine hairlines all the way around that little paintbrush tip. 
take your pocky now and you just want to measure out roughly the length that you want for the handle of your paintbrush and then add a tiny fraction more to go into that paintbrush tip, snapping it off. Try not to handle this too much because it will start to melt in your fingers. So I took the whole pocky, dipped it in my water and then just quickly slid that piece of fondant right onto the end of that slightly damp pocky and use my fingers just to kind of mold it onto that piece of pocky. Put it down and try to stop working with it as quickly as you can so that you don't mark and discolour that pocky stick and melt that chocolate too much. Once again you want to roll out that really thin sausage of your grey and you'll notice now I'm handling my paintbrush by the actual fondant end rather than the chocolate end to keep the heat from my hands from melting. I'm going to coil that little grey sausage around once again exactly the same as we did with the last one and use my fingers just to press it down. And then we're going to use some of that water and lustre dust mixture to make it silver again so that it's shiny and not that flat grey. Use your fingers just to pinch the very end and kick it out to the side a little bit to give it the illusion of a bit of movement. And essentially that's how you make your non-illusion effect regular style of paintbrush. Now for frosting our cupcake. You'll notice I'm using one of our rainbow paint splatter kind of cupcakes. So I can link to the tutorial on how to bake those in the description box below this video. But I opted for chocolate ganache because there's so much colour going on inside the cupcake and around the outside of the case as well as on top. I want it to be on a really nice contrasting surface. I'm doing a flat top style of frosting. So you can see I've just scooped a whole lot of ganache on, more than I think I'm going to need. And then I'm using my knife, the back of my knife, to flatten out the top, making sure that I push ganache right over the edges of that cupcake liner. Now I'm going to clean my knife and I'm going to scoop around the sides of the cupcake with the back of the knife which is nice and flat and just remove that excess ganache and then I'm going to do the same with the top. It's a really simple frosting style that always lets your fondant accessory be the absolute star of the cupcake and you can achieve without any fancy tools or equipment. To attach your cupcake wrapper you're simply wrapping it around the base of your cupcake and using a little bit of sticky tape to affix it at the back. With your cupcakes frosted, it's as simple as now taking your Illusion paint palette, plopping it straight on top of that chocolate ganache, and then you want to take your Illusion paint brush. So now with this, just measure it up alongside, and you want to break off the bottom section of the pocky, making sure that you've got enough to give it stability inside the cupcake. Your hole in your red should be exactly the right size for your pocky, so push it all the way down so that the red tip of your paintbrush meets up nice and flush with that red little spot on your paint palette. Use your fingers just to blend your paintbrush tip in with that little spot of colour on the paint palette and try to close up any gaps between the two. Now I like to take this a little bit over the top by taking some tiny, tiny little flecks of the same coloured fondant and rolling them into minuscule little teardrops and using a little bit of water just to stick them on. Almost like that paintbrush has splashed into the paint and sent red paint going all over our palette. This is a bit optional and I didn't do it on all of my cupcakes, I just did it on a couple. To affix your non-illusion paintbrush, you want to make sure that the tip of the paintbrush is matching the colour of the paint in the paint palette that you're attaching it to. And then a little bit of water both on the tip and on the end of your paintbrush. Stick it straight down, that should be enough to adhere it to your fondant. I hope you've loved learning how to make these super cute and very easy illusion paint palette cupcakes. Make sure you subscribe to My Cupcake Addiction if you'd like to see more from us and thanks very much for watching.